and say that <coughs> someone that lost has won, like they did at the uh, Nigerian Governors Forum, that they will know that the rest of you are men in Nigeria. Yes. And if you remember, after yes. the elections in yes. 2011, yes. part of the insurgency that we have today, some yes. people insinuated, excuse yes. me, insinuated that it was what Buhari had said about not letting anybody get away with rigging the elections and all that, that they may have also um, got people angry. Let Do you think that statements like this are good right. for the growth of our democracy? All right, let me, I think they're very good because it serves as a warning. And I'll also put a question to you. Do you think, uh, are these people planning to rig? I mean, it, it, has Nigeria got to a point that we can't even say that if you rig, there will be consequences? In other words, if you're planning to rig, we shouldn't even say so and tell you that it's wrong and that we will stand up to it. Is that where we've got to? Do you have if, facts that they're if planning to rig? I ha I'm putting the question to you. I never said they were planning to rig. What concerns me is the sentiment that you're not even allowed to come out and speak freely and say, listen, you mustn't rig. There mustn't be rigging. What we saw at the Nigerian Governors Forum election the other day was unprecedented in the annals of Nigerian history. I'm a historian. I follow the history of this country and many other countries and I've been doing so for years. Okay? It is unprecedented. You had 35 men that went into a room, distinguished individuals, all of them, respectable people, and they did a vote. It was a secret ballot. Everything was straightforward and it was filmed. One got 19, the other got 15. They now left the room and the one that got 15 now got up and said, I won the election. And the other gentleman did not win. The Rotimi Amechi did not win. That he won the election. Now, when you see things like that, that certainly doesn't encourage me or others to want to stay within this fold of people who will, who will, who will say by their own uh, knowledge and vocabulary that 15 is actually higher than 19 in the numerical lexicon uh, you know, of humanity. It's well, extraordinary. Well, it's extraordinary. Well, Femi, I hope, I wish we had a lot of time. And I, and I will take the liberty <laughs> sure. to invite you to this program I'll again. I'll be delighted. But let me, let me ask you finally. Yeah. Why would you think mm. that Nigerians will leave the government of Jonathan mm. and the PDP and vote mm. in 2015 for a party led by Buhari, um, um, Asiwaju, and the others? What, I mean, why would you say that? Listen what, to me. What, what are your facts? Li well, I don't, you know, I never said Nigerians were, I don't know what the mind of Nigerians are. All I know is that the level of discontentment for the present government and for the PDP in this country is unprecedented. Not only do I know that, I also know that in terms of quality of leadership, as far as I'm concerned, if you compare the leadership of today's PDP to the APC leadership, I mean, there is absolutely no comparison. It's time for change in this country. You have a situation where the present administration has marginalized the Southwest, that is the PDP Southwest, completely. They're complaining bitterly every day. They may not say so publicly. But they're fighting that, among themselves. They're, listen, they're that, the ones fighting you, you, among you, themselves. You, there are reasons for fighting you put to them. I'm not part of them, all right? <laughs> the issue is that they are being marginalized and they've been humiliated and disgraced by their own federal government and by their own party leadership. That is number one. Number two, you look at what is happening in the northern part of this country, you will see that people are not happy. If you put north and west together, and you now, you now, you now, you now juxtapose that and put Ijo land together to say that the Ijo land will be able to, 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 defeat, to defeat the whole of the north and the whole of the southwest okay, in an election. Well, these are strange calculations as far as I'm concerned. I think the APC leadership, it's a good quality leadership. It is not just General Buhari. It is not just Asiwaju Tunumbu. It is not just Samundai Isaiah or Nuhu Ribadu or El Dufai. You just joined, so many, you just jo you just joined listen them, listen so how me. did you know listen all Listen to me. I've been part of those, the other ones I mentioned for many years. El Rufai, we're we are, we are together. Ribadu, we're together. So many others. And most of them that are in the ACN, we were in Nadeku together, okay? So, this is, you know, don't worry too much about me. Let's worry about Nigeria. And as far as I'm concerned, they present a far more credible um, leadership than we have in the PDP today. And we're praying and hoping that we agree on a candidate and we go to the field and we'll defeat the PDP once and for all and put them where they deserve to be. Honorable Minister, I'd like to thank you. <laughs> my <laughs> pleasure. My, isn't my pleasure Pleasure's speaking with mine. you? And I hope you'll be here again. I'll definitely be here anytime. And thank when you we so return, much. we'll look at 40 years of democracy and how it's impacting on the ordinary Nigerian. Don't go away.